OCR GCSE Computer Science. In this half of episode six, we will be looking at system software, the operating system. So because this topic is quite big, we're going to be covering bullet points one to five. So what is an operating system? What are the functions of an operating system? Device drivers and user interface on top of some exam questions. And we'll look at six to nine in the next video in part two. So what is an operating system? An operating system is a complex piece of software that is found on most computers. It's the program that controls the entire computer. Now, what are the functions of, a, of an operating system? So the operating system manages user accounts for security. It communicates with internal and external hardware via device drivers. It provides a user interface. It enables multitasking via monitoring the memory and CPU. It coordinates file management and disk management, and it provides a platform for different applications to run. So we'll be looking at these now. So what are device drivers? Device drivers are software that communicates with internal hardware of peripherals. So peripherals, remember, are any device that you want to connect to your computer. So when you have a device driver, it's basically connecting your computer to the internal hardware of whatever peripheral device. For example, if you wanted to connect your computer to a printer. So every piece of hardware on a computer system requires a device driver. So you can see in this image here, this is on a computer and each of these shows a different peripheral device and it's showing a different driver for connecting to that different peripheral device. So how it works is the operating system detects any new hardware signals and any new peripheral signals and then installs the matching driver. For example, if your computer detected a signal of your new printer that you bought, then it will install the matching driver that will connect your computer to that printer. I hope that makes sense. Now let's look at user interface. So user interface allows the user to interact with the computer system. Now we will be looking at this more in another episode, but just so that you're aware, there are two types, graphical user interface and command line interface. So when you go on your phone or your laptop and you see these icons, you see these um, nice menus, pointers, and now on iOS devices, you also have, you know, um, you can touch it, so it's touch screen gestures, pinching and swiping. These are all things that make it easier for us as a user to interact with that computer system. Now, in terms of command line interface, this makes this is actually more difficult and it makes it a little bit less easier for users to interact because it requires the user to know a little bit of background knowledge about how the computer works. Now, with command line interface, you actually have control over the CPU. Whereas with graphical user interface, you are given a choice of set instructions and you can choose whichever one you want. So it's a lot easier to use GUI. This is what command line interface looks like. So it's a line by line text um, inference and you have to enter your text requirement and it will then carry out whatever you've asked it to. This is what a graphical user face interface looks like. So you, which would you say is more user friendly, a graphical user interface or a command line interface? And they could ask you that in the exam. So it's a good thing to think about. Now let's do some exam question practice. Identify two benefits of using a command line interface instead of a graphical user interface. Pause this video and you should have two minutes for this two marker. Let's look at the answers. So the command line interface is actually less resource heavy because the graphical user interface has loads of programs to make it easier for us to see. But command line interface is very basic. So it, therefore it's less resource heavy. 
Also, it can give the user a greater control. As I said, with command line interface, you can directly interact with the CPU. You can't exactly do this with the graphical user interface. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you watch the part two to this video. And we have all of our episodes for computer science covering the entire specification. So make sure you subscribe to Noble for GCSE and for the future Noble for A-Level. Thank you so much for watching again and see you soon.